The needle bearing is attached to the connecting rod and allows the piston to pivot as the engine operates. After years of use, the bearing can fail and seize. It can fail much faster if the engine is operated with insufficient lubrication. Replacing the needle bearing is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you how. Hi, I'm Mark Soja. Do-it-yourself repairs like these are easier than you might think. From lawn machines to cordless grills, kitchen mixers, outdoor grills, our how-to videos walk you through each repair from start to finish. So doing it yourself means never having to do it alone. Let's get started. I'll begin by removing the blower tube from the blower. To unlock the tube lock, I'll insert a screwdriver against the tab, and I'll twist the lock. Now I can remove the tube. Next, I'll remove the lock ring. Next, I'll remove the muffler cover and the starter. Now I'll remove the pawl assembly. And I'll remove the starter plate. And now I'll remove the carburetor and fuel tank assembly. Next, I'll remove the upper handle. Note how the wires are routed through the handle and then remove the other half. I'll remove the guard, the trigger assembly, I'll remove the spark plug wire, and remove the inner plastic guard. Now we'll begin disassembling the blower housing. I'll remove the guard. Next, the outer portion of the housing. Now the impeller. And now I can remove the inner portion of the impeller housing. And I'll pull the wires away from the housing. Now that I have access to the ignition coil, I can go ahead and remove it. Next, I'll remove the second ignition wire. Next, I'll remove the impeller hub and the flywheel. Next, I'll remove the muffler, the heat shield, and the isolator. And now I'll remove the spark plug. Now I can remove the cylinder from the crank case. And I'll remove the cylinder gasket. Now I can remove the old piston assembly. I'll start by removing one of the retaining rings. The retaining ring should be disposed of and never reused. When you remove them, you bend the ring. If you reinstall it, it will likely come out and damage the piston and cylinder. I'll use an Allen wrench to push the wrist pin out of the piston. And be careful to not lose the washers. Now I can remove the needle bearing. I'll place the connecting rod over the jaws on my vise, and I'll use a socket to tap the needle bearing out of the connecting rod. Now I can install the new needle bearing. I'll place it onto the connecting rod and start it into place with a rubber mallet. I need to center the needle bearing in the connecting rod so the shoulder is the same on both sides. So I'll place it back onto my vice jaws and again use my socket to tap it into place. And that looks good. Now I can reinstall the piston assembly. I'll thread the wrist pin into the piston until it just extends into the center gap. I'll place one of the washers onto the end of the wrist pin. 
Now I can place the piston onto the connecting rod. I'll line the piston so the arrow is pointing to the exhaust side of the engine. I'll push the wrist pin into the connecting rod and now I need to install the second washer. I'll slide the second washer in between the needle bearing and the piston, push the wrist pin in so it captures it, and then align the washer so the wrist pin will slide through. Then I'll push the wrist pin all the way into the piston and install a new retaining ring. Next, I'll install the cylinder gasket. You'll notice there's a notch in the gasket, and that notch aligns with the notch in the housing. Also, this tab should wrap around the side of the engine where the starter attaches. Now I can reinstall the cylinder. I'll apply some two-cycle oil to the inside of the cylinder, then align the cylinder properly so I have the exhaust side and the intake side on the correct sides of the engine. I'll compress the piston ring, making sure the end gap is aligned with the pin in the piston, and slide the cylinder into place. An easy way to tell if the cylinder is properly aligned to the crankcase body is the mounting holes for the ignition coil should be on the same side as the tapered shaft for the flywheel. And now I'll secure the cylinder to the crankcase. Next, I'll reinstall the spark plug. I'm reinstalling it early on because having the spark plug in place will build compression in the cylinder. So when I go to reinstall the flywheel and starter components, I'll be able to attach them using an impact wrench. The compression in the cylinder will prevent the crankshaft from rotating as I use the impact to secure them. Now I'll reinstall the isolator. The isolator should be aligned so the vent hole at the bottom aligns with the vent hole on the cylinder. The gasket should be placed so the notch is down and the long tab is on the starter side. Next, I'll reinstall the heat shield. I'll leave the screw on the flywheel side loose as we'll be removing it later for the ignition wires. And now I'll reinstall the muffler. Now I'll reinstall the flywheel and the impeller hub. Next, I'll reinstall the ignition coil. As I reinstall the ignition coil, I need to set the gap between the flywheel magnets and the coil. To do that, I'll use a gapping tool. It's simply a piece of plastic that's 14 thousandths of an inch thick, which is the proper gap for this engine. If you don't have a gapping tool, a thick business card will work as well. I'll place the tool over the magnets and then stick the ignition coil to the magnets. I'll line the grommet with the heat shield. I'll start the screws, then I'll push the ignition coil firmly against the flywheel and tighten up the screws. Then I can remove the gapping tool. Now I'll reconnect the ignition wires from the handle. and now I'll reinstall the blower housing. I'll slide the lower handle onto the housing and place it over the engine, aligning the screw holes. Now I'll reinstall the impeller. And the other side of the impeller housing. And 
and I'll reinstall the guard. Now I'll reroute the ignition wires into the housing. First, they pass through the small gap just above the spark plug wire. Then through the notch at the top of the fan housing. Next, they go through the groove on the front of the housing. Next, I'll install the plastic guard. It slides behind the isolator, and as I install it, I need to thread the spark plug wire through the notch. Now, I'll reinstall the trigger and the throttle linkage, along with the linkage cover. And now I can reinstall the handle. I'll make sure the wires are behind the pins on the handle. And now I can secure this half of the handle. I'll go ahead and reconnect the spark plug wire. And now I can install the other half of the handle. Now I'll reinstall the fuel tank. And the starter plate. Next, the starter pawl assembly. And now reinstall the starter. And the muffler cover. Now I'll reconnect the carburetor linkage. The cable attaches to the back side of the wire linkage. Now I'll thread the intake gasket onto the housing bolts, pass the bolts through the carburetor, and through the rear intake gasket. And then I'll secure this assembly to the engine. I'll reinstall the air filter and the air filter cover. And I'll finish up by reinstalling the blower tube clamp and the blower tube. And now you know how to install a new needle bearing in your small engine. Be sure to check back often for new videos and expert advice. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up 